Indeed. Uh, we have a surprisingly juicy stream today. You know, I wasn't sure I was going to cover the Zack Snyder story because I was like, it's just so stupid. Hey, Dancing Dog 60. And, you know, Zach um, was very kind to me. He, he reached out to me to do those interviews. And so, uh, but I think there's something to discuss here. Uh, and also, it's a slow news day. So, <laughs> that's the way it goes. That's the way the cookie crumbles. So, it's so nice to see everybody here. Thank you for joining me. Uh, as always, the way the streams work is please try to keep your questions and comments to, um, to the story at hand. And I might not be able to address them until, you know, you know you, if, you, if you don't wait until I open the story up to questions and comments, I might miss your comment. But then, as always, at the end of the stream, uh, you know, you can ask me anything that you would like. Thank you for gifting a membership, Stephen. And it's so nice whenever you guys gift memberships. Again, that's the best way to help this channel. Not only do you help me out, but somebody else gets a membership. All right, everybody, here we go. All right, here we go. Story number one. Here, here it comes. Where'd it go? Boop. Oh, no, I covered up Barbie. Barbie just can't catch a break. I'm sure that's how they felt today. Barbie's like, why? You know, what's that, um, that great meme from uh, Real Housewives, right? Uh, why am I in this? Hey, Matthew Paver. So generous. Wow. 50 memberships. You made it rain, Matthew. Everybody's getting in. If you would like to get a membership, uh, uh, YouTube chooses who gets a membership. Uh, you know, liking the street, liking videos, subscribing, having been a member in the past, leaving comments. Uh, the more you interact with this channel, the more likely you are to get a gifted membership. That is extremely generous of you, Matthew. Everybody, every, from 1 to 50, it's all appreciated. But that was very nice of you, Matthew. Uh, all right, so uh, let's talk about... Uh, oh, Haunted Autumn, right behind with 10 memberships. Oh, you guys are great. Wow, look at that. You guys are really, really nice. Just the nicest... You guys, uh, People say the BTT community is really uh, so kind, and that's... You know, that's because of you guys. So uh, that is really, uh, it just makes, what is, I, I, I like doing this. You know, I've never understood it. I was like, that's dumb. And then when I did it myself, I was like, oh, it's fun. I like it. <laughs> All right. All right, so let's talk about Zack Snyder. Uh, that's, Zack Snyder should have just gone on Joe Rogan and done this. And been like, thanks, everybody. I loves you. Uh, but instead, you know, I think to be fair, Joe Rogan invites conspiracy theories on his show, right? I mean, like, you're in that space. Everybody's getting crazy. You know, you go down the rabbit hole. I think that's where Joe Rogan records his, uh, po his podcast. <laughs> in the rabbit hole. <sighs> but, you know, Zack Snyder went on it. And I think that was an actually, actually a good idea. You know, I think that's a, a good fit in terms of brands, especially these days. And I think that it's a lot of attention. You know, you get a lot of attention doing that. And I think that's clever. Uh, now, also, I would like to point out that I gave Rebel Moon a positive review because I understood it for what it was. Right? So, I mean, I think Rebel Moon was very much a Zack Snyder movie. I thought it certainly had its moments. Uh, so, I, you know, I thought it was, I thought it was, you know, I thought it was fine. All right? And I do think it was interesting that he targeted Warner Brothers yet again. I had this for the end of my notes, but I'll just say it here. I didn't see him bringing up Oppenheimer. Hey, Box of Wolves. He could have said his movie did as well as Oppenheimer, but he knows his audience, and he knows that Barbie was an easy target that would, people would, would laugh at and like, would think was good. And I just feel so bad for Barbie. I don't know why everybody wants to pick on Barbie. Barbie was a great movie. It brought people together. Uh, and Barbie has not by the... Although Barbie did make a joke about Zack Snyder. So maybe he was like, mm, you know, a little, a little, a little, a little, uh, a little volley, right? You know, both in both just, ha we're both just having fun here. All right. So, uh, but yeah, I just, you know, he could have brought up Oppenheimer, but then I think, you know, his, his, you know, the audience he was going for would have been upset. Uh, but, you know, I just, you know, I, I just wish he hadn't taken the shot at Barbie. Uh, you know, he could, he could, there's, he could have brought up tons of movies to reference because he he's arguing that his movie would have made 1.6 billion dollars if it had been released in theaters which is is ridiculous but so let's talk about that so if you didn't see the video what did he say now some of you when i said i was going to talk about this story you were like i hope you're not going to just go off the clip 
And I hope you're going to watch the whole Joe Rogan interview. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. All right. And who, what did everybody see? Everybody sees the clip. All right. Uh, now, I do think it's a little bit of a bait, a cl like a clickbaity clip. And I'm going to look at it reasonably. And because, you know, I can understand what he's trying to say. Uh, so basically, he said, you know, Rebel Moon was actually a huge hit. So he went through the numbers and he said, Rebel Moon got about 80 to 90 million clicks. And according to Netflix, each click is worth two views because they imagine that two people are watching it at least. I think a lot of people watch Netflix by themselves, to be honest with you, because you're watching it on your phone, you're watching it on the go. Uh, I would suspect that a lot of Netflix's viewership is solo viewership. Uh, but I guess maybe they feel sometimes it's four people. So it factors out, it, it, it balances out to two people per, to, per thing. However, I would say that this is not even the metrics that Netflix itself uses anymore, unless this is what they told Zack Snyder, make them feel better. But if you look at their, their metrics that they release to the public, they release the number of minutes divided by the runtime for a full view, right? So he's going by clicks not complete views. So I suspect there would be different numbers if that were the case. Uh, because you know, uh, there's a little movie that came out right around the same time as Rebel Moon, and it's the only recent film to break into the most watched movies of all time on Netflix, and it ain't Rebel Moon. It's Leave the World Behind. Leave the World Behind came out earlier in the month in December. That is, I was looking it up because I was wondering if Rebel Moon had gotten on the list. Leave the World Behind is the, hold on, the fifth most watched movie ever. Uh, thank you, Suba Sisu. Um, I think I said thanks to Box of Wolves already. All right. But yeah, so Leave the World Behind was the fifth most watched movie of all time. It joined the list, but Rebel Moon did not. So if Rebel Moon would have made $1.6 billion, if those had been ticket sales, I'll leave the world behind is like what a two billion dollar movie it's up there with the spot it's like if uh, if barack obama decided to say that leave the world behind was successful as no way home you'd be like that's ridiculous because it is ridiculous and that's why obama didn't say it because oh, barack obama produced it i'm so proud of the obamas for producing that movie and they you know they handled it beautifully Mwah, chef's kiss you know and they didn't you know they just they let the work speak for itself you know, I, I was amazed how well that turned out. And I liked that movie. Leave the World Behind was a very good movie. All right, so <clears throat> now the other thing I want to talk about with this is that, as many people are pointing out, paying to go to see a movie at a theater is extremely different than clicking on it at no extra cost on a streaming service. It is an extremely different bar that's been set. And so to compare the two, is ridiculous. Like more people are going to click on a movie for free than they would go to a theater to pay money for it. That's just the way it is. Um, and I think you can just look at the movies and you can, you can see the difference. And to put them on the same pedestal, it just is, it may, it just, they just, it's so, it just makes no, it makes no sense. Uh, also, it's more difficult to sell a ticket in a movie theater these days because of streaming. Because it's so easy to watch a movie at home, to click on that movie for free. So that's the situation as well. Then you're not even factoring in, because, uh, you know, at the very least, Zack Snyder could argue, well, no matter what you talk about cost, more people sell Rebel Moon than Barbie. And I would counter, well, you're not factoring in all the people who got Barbie on digital or who watched Barbie on streaming. Not to mention, Zack Snyder has a very strong core fan base who probably watched that movie multiple times, Rebel Moon. So, you know, you don't know exactly how it's going to break down. So, I think at the end of the day, nobody talked really about Rebel Moon. Rebel Moon did not have a pop culture footprint. It came and went. And so, I mean, I don't even, I forgot to look it up. I don't even think it has a high audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. Let me check. Yeah, it's 21 to 58. So, you know, I just, 
I don't know. I, I like Zach. You know, he's a great guy. You know, he's had a rough time. Uh, I feel bad that he's kind of back in a rough place, but I, I don't think this was the approach to take because this just clearly is not the same thing. And I will say at the end of the day, I don't think that more people saw Rebel Moon than Barbie. At least certainly not in a meaningful way. Bye, Carla. All right, does, does anybody have any questions or comments about this story? XTC says, I doubt he genuinely believes what he's, genuinely believes what he's saying. He knew it would trend. I, I think that you could argue that, sure. But the question is, he had to realize that it would be at his expense and the Rebel Moon expense. I think there are other ways. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think... I don't think manufacturing drama is the way to go. Whelm says, I think Netflix shot themselves in the foot by not going for the R release immediately. Probably. And I don't think it should have been two halves of a movie because it was not a complete first half. Jake says, I clicked on it, watched 10 minutes, and got bored and turned it off. So I'm guessing he means I'm two people paying $12 each. Yeah, I mean, people watch and consume in a different way on Netflix. It's a different business model. Netflix isn't even interested in selling you a ticket. They just want you to keep you subscribed. Stephen Turner says, Barbie also outgrossed, outgrossed every single one of his films. Oh, and every DC film. That's an excellent point as well, Stephen. Also, look at the reviews and award noms. You know, Stephen, I like your first point the best. You know, like Watchmen is a very well-constructed film, right? 300 put Zack Snyder on the map. But Barbie made more. What did he even say about Batman? I didn't see what he said about Batman. Does anyone want to fill me in quickly on what he said about Batman? Hey, Dre Films. Grace, you don't want to know. <laughs> oh, Joy, is it that bad? Oh, Hector Vega says Batman is irrelevant, irrelevant if he can't kill. That's pretty bad. Batman can't kill. That's ridiculous. Why do it? Why say that? He was doing so well. Everybody loved his Batman. Uh, Jazz Tannen says, Rogan started the conversation about Barbie and Zach was talking about Netflix and how it's an amazing tech. I think he just got lost in his own example. Joe Rogan set him up. That makes a lot of sense. Well, I have to say, if that's true, I give Joe Rogan props for being able to set somebody up like that. I mean, that's something for people to think about when they go on his show. He's leading them along. He's playing mind games. That's amazing. There's method to his madness, which would explain a lot, because there are a lot of crazy people, and yet not all of them have a really successful podcast. Eden says, Barbie has been searched more on Google Trends, too. And uh, Sup says, hi, Grace. Hope you're having a good day. I don't watch Netflix too much, but how many movies have they had so far that are still talked about in 2024? Well, people tweeted about leave the world behind when that uh, when all the phones went down remember the other day people i was like why is that trending and people are like it's happening uh so i definitely don't think batman should ever kill Joy says, I feel like if Barbie made less money, people would be less inclined to come for it. But because it smashed the box office, they feel it's fair game. More than fair game. They feel, I think, that put a target on it, on Barbie. By the way, I was still thinking about how, because Greta Gerwig is now, side note, Greta Gerwig is now talking about a potential Barbie sequel because she, she's, not, she's not even nominated, so she can start discussing it. And I told you that would happen once the Oscar stuff was done. But because she's, out of the, she's not even in the race, she's already talking about a Barbie sequel. And I was very surprised that she said she might make a Barbie sequel. And she seemed to, not just Ken, she seemed to insinuate that it might be about Barbie. And she said if she can find the angle, she'll make it. And I, th I bet she finds the angle. <laughs> if Todd Phillips can be motivated to find the angle for Joker 2, I'm sure Greta Gerwig can be motivated to find the angle for Barbie 2. However, um, I, I was reminded that every single movie that Greta Gerwig has ever made has been nominated for Best Picture. Lady Bird, Little Women, and Barbie. And the fact that she wasn't nominated for director continues to blow my mind. Uh, and I can, the only thing I can think of is that she's a woman, that that's the reason why. There is, there's no other reason that I think makes sense. 
Well, Mrs. Grace, I encourage you to watch the whole interview. It's actually a good listen, and a lot of stuff Zach said is being taken out of context. That is unfortunately the world that we live in. You know, I mean, I'm not saying it's right, but I think that you have to conduct yourself knowing that's going to happen. Subasisu says, where'd it go? I unfortunately think Zach thinks his fan base is bigger than it actually is. We saw the Zack Snyder Justice League viewership too. We never actually totally saw it, but you know, I told you it was not, 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 did not blow the roof off of HBO. Uh, I still feel it should have been a series. It's a shame they weren't able to do that. Uh, you know, I think a four, four night event would have gone over much better. Um, but, uh, it, it's, a, I think that there was a moment when the, the Zack Snyder's Justice League, when the Snyder cut truly was a, as big as Barbie. That, you know, it's, it was a cultural moment. And I, I think that's true. I think the, the, the Zack Snyder's Justice League was as big as Barbie. I was a part, I was like, you know, I was like on the, on the side of that. I was reporting it. I was helping fill you guys in on it. It was an amazing time. Uh, and I feel bad that ever since the movie came out, uh, there's been a lot of chipping away at that legacy. When it, if it had just been left alone, I think that it maybe would have held up better. Uh, MM92 says, Grace, I hate in general how trendy it is to insult Barbie just because it was so successful. Yeah, it's really, really unfortunate. Oh, Gareth! Hey, Golden Girls! Uh, thanks for gifting 10 memberships. So kind of you. And Dre Films, thank you for gifting a membership as well. All right, a couple quick other comments, and i got to go to the next story. Tass Jandon talks about the Batman killing thing again. Um, uh, he says, basically, he said Batman can't kill, and he wanted to explore what happens when your hero is put in a situation and if he can still survive it. Well, I have no problems exploring whether or not Batman should, you know, why he doesn't and how that, what that does to him. That would work for me, for sure. And then Jake Van Norden says, did you see the Batman animated series Lego set that was announced today? No, I did not. I, I, I'm not, I like Legos, but I'm not like a, um, I don't like seeing things in Lego format. It looks weird to me, but I know that there's a big audience for that. And then Stephen says, side note, because you mentioned the Obamas, did you see that Rustin, which got the first, op um, that's, that's, you can't put a side note on a side note, Stephen. We're too off track. All right, let's go to the next story. All right, hold on. All right, story number two. Serious boop. Okay, so I feel weird putting that picture of the victim, Halna uh, uh, Hutchins, you know, with Barbie. You know, it's so sad that she was killed on this set. It's really a serious situation. But I want to include the picture of the victim. I think it's really important to, to keep her in the conversation and to remember her. Uh, I think it's easy to focus on the people who did it, but I think, you know, don't forget. Because, you know, she, she wasn't a famous individual. Uh, she was a hardworking person in Hollywood, working, still working her way up, in fact. Um, and she's, she's not here anymore. Uh, because uh, Alec Baldwin shot her uh, with a gun that was improperly loaded by Hannah Gutierrez-Reed. And so that's what, uh, we, what we're dealing with here. All right, so the big headline, of course, as you probably saw yesterday, was that Hannah Gutierrez-Reed was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter. I am shocked at how many people are defending her and saying, I've seen a lot of people online, maybe it's people who are pro-gun. And so they feel, wow, if this could happen to Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, maybe it could happen to someone else. You're like, yes, it could. Anyone who is sloppy with a firearm, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, and I feel, you know, once you pick that up, you're responsible for it. Uh, and so, uh, I think too many people feel, I feel there are too many discussions sometimes about like, wah, wah, with car accidents and shootings. No, you are responsible for your actions, you, you know, cause, cause of the horrific permanent consequences of them. So she was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Now what that means is basically extreme negligence that results in death. Uh, so... <clears throat> this is the same charge, by the way, that Alec Baldwin now faces. They dropped the original charges against him, but now he has a new court date in July with also one of, them, one of the charges is an involuntary manslaughter charge. Now, as XTC pointed out, she is only facing 18 months. But, you know, for I think someone who was on the job doing a fictional movie, 18 months is significant because... Uh, 
you know, I think we've never seen that kind of a, a, a you know, actual jail time. I think it would, I think it would be very disappointing if she didn't serve actual jail time. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, and of course, of course, she'll never work again, Franco. I mean, of course, she shouldn't have been working to begin with. For those of you who don't know, her father is actually an extremely famous armorer. Uh, and so she felt she could go into the family business with absolutely no training and not taking it seriously. So uh, we'll see. And that's right, A.J. Jones. She has been remanded into custody. Uh, I, don't, I don't think she would. She's too famous. I don't think she'd skip town or, you know, she wouldn't show up to be uh, arraigned. We'll see if she gets bail or not. Um, we'll see how long it's. But, you know, if her sentencing happens pretty quickly, she might not. All right, so... <clears throat> this is basically, so what does this mean? A lot of people want to know, what does this mean for Alec Baldwin? I think that some people, some people said they felt that it meant that, oh, we have our person who's guilty. Maybe this means Alec Baldwin will get off. You know, he won't, he won't be found guilty because, oh, it was Hannah Gutierrez Reed's fault. And I'm sure that's the case. I'm sure that's the argument that his lawyers will make. However, I don't think that that is going to happen for him. I think this makes it more likely that he will be found guilty of involuntary manslaughter because in this case, it really did take two people to tango. It took one person to load the gun incorrectly and put a real round in there and not accurately check it. And it took a second person because, you know, set safety, safety on a film set is checks and balances. There's a number of things that have to happen to guarantee safety. So that if one person messes up, oh, this next person will catch it. That's the way it works. And he was supposed to, you're responsible for your own weapon, and you're responsible for where you point it. And you're responsible, you know, he claims that it didn't, he didn't touch the trigger, but yet I believe the forensics people say that he did. But even if you took that out of the equation, he was holding the gun, he didn't check it, he pointed it directly at her, which apparently... You know, I've never had any experience with this, but a lot of people who have have said that is one of the number one rules. Never actually point the gun at anybody. You're supposed to cheat it. And then, of course, as Will just brought up, he's a producer. He's not only an actor on the set, but he's a producer. All the corners that were cut, he is responsible for that. He hired this woman who clearly was not uh, qualified. He had a set that was so unsafe that days before this woman was the killed, uh, Halna Hutchins, most of the crew walked off set because they said it wasn't safe enough. And so he is responsible for that. Uh, Hans said, says, I've seen so many arguments defending Baldwin because of the rules of Hollywood. Well, the rules and um, the safety say never assume a, uh, a hunter's safety, or never assume a gun, gun isn't loaded. The rules in Hollywood must change. Well, <clears throat> I just... Uh, SMR Goose, he was aiming directly at the cinematographer because it was a shot. He was supposed to be aiming at the camera. Well, guess who's behind the camera? The cinematographer. And that's how that happened. So um, SAG even came out in support of Alec Baldwin because, you know, it puts a lot of actors in jeopardy. Because here's the issue. Um, Heather says, go see Jensen Ackles' interview with local authorities online. He was on the set like, oh, oh what did he say, Heather? I mean, I'll be interested... I mean, I'm sure, I would think Jensen Ackles would want to stay out of it, you know? Uh, I mean, he doesn't need to weigh in because, you know, it's, it's pretty, it seems, I think, pretty clear cut. But, so here's the thing. Hopefully, you would think this would lead to just more set safety, that people would be more careful on set. But I think at the end of the day, if I were on a set, I'd be too nervous that somebody else would mess up. And I'd be like, I don't trust anybody to check that gun anymore. I don't trust anybody to make sure it's not pointed in the wrong direction. Because all it takes is a split second for someone to go, oops. So <clears throat> I would think they're probably not going to use real guns that fire any kind of projectile anymore on a set. I mean, if I were somebody who was on the set, I wouldn't want to be around it. If I were the representation or if I was related or had a relationship with somebody who was on a set, I wouldn't want them to take on that kind of liability. I'd be like, it's not worth it for a movie. Ask him to give you a rubber gun. <clears throat> I think that that is what's going to happen. And I think, as I told you before, when this first happened, I think the visual effects houses will have packages that they'll just easily add, uh, you know, gunfire to any, any film. I mean, they use so many VFX these days, they should be able to do that really easily. I mean, they're even using VFX. This isn't really talked about, 
But in most movies, most people have, most actors have their faces smoothed out. And like, I remember reading an article about how some actors at first refused it, but then they would look at the footage of somebody else next to them with their face smoothed out and be like, well, if you're gonna do all my co-stars, you gotta do me because I look ridiculous next to them. <laughs> so if they're going in there smoothing everybody's face out, if people are paying for that, they can pay to put some, uh, some gun effects in. So that's what I think's going to happen. I think they just won't. It's just, I wouldn't, be will, I wouldn't even be willing to touch, touch it. I, they'd be like, oh, we all checked it. I'd be like, I don't care. I'm not touching it. If I don't touch it, I can't be held liable. All right, so, uh, so I think, yeah, so bottom line for this story, I think there's a good chance Alec Baldwin's going to jail. Uh, Miss Story, and they're trying to release this film, which I think is an absolutely awful taste. Oh, thank you, Heather. I think, thank you for DMing me that interview with Jensen Ackles. Uh, I think to try and release this film is despicable. How much jail time do I think he'll get? I think it would be, I mean, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, her uh, behavior on set when you hear about it was appalling. So I would be surprised. I mean, I, I think it would be probably on the same level as Hannah Gutierrez Reed. So, I mean, let me ask you a question. If you think Alec Baldwin will do a poll, do you think Alec Baldwin should serve jail time? Yes, 18 months. Yes, longer than 18 months. No. OK. Well, I guess you could say no probation. Probation. I mean, that's just baby. Basically, you sit at home for a little bit. Probation is fine, and then no. Okay, anyone can vote in a poll, by the way. Only members can be in the chat, but anyone can vote in a poll. If you're watching right now, you can click on that poll and vote away. Karaoke Ken points out that this wasn't a traditional set that any big studio knows better. For sure, this was an independent, very cheaply run and irresponsibly run production. I'm surprised that Alec Baldwin didn't know better with all his years of experience. This wasn't like some student film or a bunch of people who were making a film for the first time. Alec Baldwin should have known better, and he certainly handled a gun before on set. Uh, sensation, this is an involuntary manslaughter charge. That's right, Ricardo. Felicity Hoffman went to jail for, for duping the college system. That's an excellent point. Jamie, there was no studio for this production, I believe, because it was an independent product, production. Super Sisu, I think, you know, I, mean, you, I hope you mean Alec Baldwin thought he could get away with running a poor set. I mean, I do, I do think it was an accident, which is why I think involuntary manslaughter is the correct charge. I mean, I don't think it was premeditated or anything like that. I just think it was, it was shocking negligence that resulted in someone's death. And he's already paid quite a bit of money to the family. He settled with them so they didn't have a civil lawsuit. Well, that's not enough. You can't buy your way out of this one. I mean, maybe if she'd only been injured, but she's dead. And I think it was an accident that could have been avoided on both these people's parts, the armorer and Alec Baldwin. That's the other issue. It wasn't an accident where like, oh, what could anybody have done? And you're like, there is a huge laundry list of what both of you could have done, and neither one of you did it. And you did it out of negligence and callousness and sloppiness. And that's the other thing. Both of these people, Hannah Gutierrez, Reed, and Alec Baldwin, they come across as simply not caring. It's not not knowing. It's not just not knowing. It's not those things. It's just simply... They did not care. 
Finn Morrow says, look at the MCU. They use CGI for almost everything. There was a behind-the-scenes video of Sam Jackson holding some stick thing that was made into a gun in post. That's right. Samuel Jackson doesn't mess around. Lindsay, the defense attorney doesn't have to prove it was an accident because I think it clearly was an accident. I mean, the, the question is, you know, uh, is it involved? Is it, is it, uh, was it avoidable and stuff like that? Cool Hive says, let's boop. Okay, let's, let's, I like the way you said that. Let's boop to the third story and then you can ask me anything that you would like. All right, hold on. Story number three. Boom, baby. I was shocked at this, but then I kind of started to come around and understand it better. So we all knew that the accountant two was coming. That had recently been announced, right? But we got some very, oh, the poll. Thank you, Suba Sisu. All right, hold on. All right, so 42% of you feel that he should serve 18 months, 28% feel longer, 20% feel that probation is fine, and 8% of you actually feel that he should not have to serve any time or anything whatsoever. That's interesting. But for the most part, uh, you overwhelmingly feel that he should serve some time, uh, about 70% of you. Uh, okay, Boom Baby Part 2. All right, back to the accountant. All right, so the accountant, too, we all knew it was happening, but we got some shocking details today. So it was announced that Warner Brothers did not take a tax write-off with the accountant, too, but sold it to MGM Amazon. Amazon, of course, now owns MGM. And at first, many of us thought that maybe Amazon would give it a theatrical release. They certainly did for Air, also from Ben Affleck, right? Uh, but it was in the press release that went out just before the stream. There was no mention of a theatrical release, but instead they said this would be a streaming film, which is very surprising. Uh, and it also reminded me of the Roadhouse situation. Road, uh, Roadhouse, you know, with Doug Lyman being upset that his movie wasn't going to theaters, and then Jake Gyllenhaal saying, what are you talking about? It was always going to be a streaming movie. But to make the situation even weirder, the press, the, the press screenings for Roadhouse are in a theater which I found very funny. I was like, ah, they're making me go to a theater to watch Roadhouse, even though people cannot see Roadhouse on a screen. It makes me wonder if maybe they will float it out in a few, on a few screens and they just haven't announced it yet. I wonder what's going to happen, but that was a surprise twist in my opinion. But anyway, the, and by the way, if you haven't seen The Accountant, you should definitely watch it. It's a great movie, Danny. It's a really, really good. I love The Accountant. Elise loved it. I loved this movie. I went gaga over it when it came out. I reviewed it. I was like, what great movie. All right, so this is going to be, though, the second movie will be a streaming film. But here's where it got even more interesting. It was revealed today that it was always meant to be a streaming movie and that Warner Brothers had greenlit it for HBO Max. What? The plot thickens. And apparently, when Zazie came on board, he was like, I don't want to make this for HBO Max. But they decided, eh, let's sell it over to... Uh, to Amazon, uh, Amazon Prime. So I think that's interesting that they had all these HBO Max movies they were going to do, uh, but they ended up not doing them. Uh, I think this. I think there might actually be something here, which I think is very interesting. Now, first off, though, who's going to be in this movie? Anna Kendrick is not coming back, Rodrigo. I'm sorry to say. So here's the cast. All right, Ben Affleck is coming back. John Bernthal is coming back. J, uh, J.K. Simmons. Uh, and then uh, they have a new actress joining as well. Uh, hold on, I forgot to write down her name. Let me look it up. <sighs> Cynthia Adai Robinson. She will be the new lead. She's a new accountant. She's an accountant that needs help from the accountant. And then he's going to call in his crazy brother, played by who else but John Bernthal from the first movie, um, to help out. Uh, but yeah, Anna, Anna Kendrick is not returning. But everybody else is returning, interestingly enough. Oh, hey, Bay! Thanks for gifting a membership. I always love to see you. All right, so also Gavin O'Connor is coming back. Remember Gavin O'Connor? This movie was so good. I mean, it didn't do great, but it was so good that Warner Brothers was going to give uh, him Suicide Squad. Remember that? But then James Gunn became available and basically, you know, yoink, took Gavin O'Connor's pitch and made it his own, which was crazy, right? Gavin O'Connor kind of pitched, you know, basically what they ended up doing, what James Gunn ended up doing. I don't, think, I don't know if the lineup was the same, but he had this idea of going to, you know, like a 
like a third world country and the suicide squad having to go uh, contain a weapon and the weapon ended up being a super powered individual here it ended up being starro you know in james gunn's movie but you know uh, oh no you're right it was for birds of prey was that i think you're right yeah they were borrowing stuff all over the place but basically uh if that is the case then my apologies my apologies but i think there were similarities they I took a lot of the stuff right uh, but, so Gavin O'Connor, it's been rough for him, and he never rebounded, really. Poor Gavin O'Connor. Uh, so anyway, uh, but he's back. He's coming back to direct. And then Bill Duquesne uh, is scripting again. Now, Bill Duquesne went on to do a little show called Ozark, which was phenomenal. What a run. What a run. And he is, a, I think, a big part of why this movie was so good, because, you know, Gavin O'Connor's other movies have only been okay. So I think here it was the special combination of Bill Duquesne and Gavin O'Connor. And I think Ben Affleck is very good in this role. So, here's what I'm wondering. Ozark, of course, was a series. Could The Accountant become a series? That's what I'm thinking. Maybe that's one of the reasons that Amazon decided to pick this up. They were like, let's make a movie, and then if it does well enough, maybe we get a Ben Affleck series. Now, would Ben Affleck do a series? I don't see why not. I think Reacher has done really well, uh, really nicely for, uh, you know, Alan Richson's career. The Boys is big. There are some very successful shows on Amazon. Uh, and that's right, Juan Gabriel. They already have an excellent relationship with J-Lo. Oh, I love that. Thank you for bringing that up. And then also Ben Affleck did the Dunkin' Donuts commercials, and that's turned out great for him. So that's right. It could be. That's right, Marco. Dunkin' Donuts could sponsor it. And that would actually be hilarious. The accountant could take his meetings in Dunkin' Donuts. And that would actually be very on brand. I mean, I'm telling you, I think there's something here. And I think there's not only something here that can make money, but I think is actually a good idea. And I think would, you know, be a, actually a good move for Ben Affleck. And also, of course, Air was also Ben Affleck's movie. So he, he and J-Lo are very much, you know, very much over at, at Amazon. But I think it's a good idea. I, I think, I, I mean, okay, I'll ask you if you would watch an accountant series. Okay. Would you watch an, a series uh, of The Accountant with Ben Affleck? Ben Affleck has to be in it. I don't want to see anybody else be The Accountant. Okay. Heck yeah. And then, no, 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 it's a movie. I, mean, I guess are the only two options. Oh, I guess the third one is, I have no interest in this brand. Okay, there you go. Anyone, by the way, again, anyone can vote in a poll. Oh, thanks, Robbie. I didn't remember that Cynthia Adai Robinson was in the first movie. That's great. So anyone can vote in a poll. You don't have to be a member to vote in a poll. But this is what, it was a great movie. This is one of Ben Affleck's best films. Very strong. Dancing Dog 60 says maybe they could just make more movies. That's certainly another way to go. Oh, Steven Turner, that's a good point that, you know, they're losing Jack Ryan. Reacher's not going to go on forever. This could be, you know, this could pick it up. Although, you know, Chris Pratt's also making a home in Amazon. They got some pretty good stuff coming up over there. And that's right, Nacho. I agree that, you know, this is very much a fit with Amazon. They got a lot of, like, strong guy content. You know, Reacher, The Boys, Jack Reacher. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, J uh, John, um, Jack Ryan, uh, all that stuff. That's right, Fallout. By the way, side note. I'm shocked that Fallout is a binge. I mean, I was talking to some other YouTubers, and we were all excited to cover that weekly. The fact that thing went to a binge, I'm just shocked. I mean, I think, I, I thought that Mr. and Mrs. Smith was a perfect binge, but I think it's a mistake to have Fallout be a binge. I think that was a, a really big mistake. Oh, Chen, you're an accountant? Oh, I like it. Ah, I wonder if you're an assassin on the side.
Oh, Shahar, Fallout is that new show um, uh, based on the video game with uh, Walton Goggins. All right, I think you guys are, let me close the poll and then we'll go to Ask Me Anything. All right, would you watch a series of The Accountant with Ben Affleck? 47% of you have no interest in this brand. Uh-oh. Uh, 38% say, heck yeah. And 14% of you feel that it's a movie. Oh, that's interesting. Well, we'll see how it goes. Maybe, I guess, the, maybe, the, maybe the idea that one of you had to just make more movies would be the way to go. Oh, yeah. Do you all got, I mean, maybe I should have explained to you the setup. And maybe that's why you said you have no interest in this brand. He's not just an accountant. He's an, he's an assassin who uses his, you know, he's on the, he's on the uh, spectrum. And uh, he's not only a great accountant, but it makes him, it, his, 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 he's like Sheldon from Big Bang Theory. Only his, his being on the spectrum not only makes him a great accountant, but also a great assassin. That's right, Jose. People thought I was talking about a show where he just played an accountant. You must have thought I was crazy. That's right, Rodrigo. It's more like John Wick. That's funny. Maybe they need to fix this title. The accountant. Parentheses. He's an assassin. <laughs> He's an assassin. Watch it. Oh, yeah, that's right, Jose. We called it Sheldon Wick. That's funny. That's very funny. Ah, uh, hilarious, hilarious. Okay. All right. So that's the that's the those are the stories of the day. Let's go to the Q and A. Booyah! All right. You can ask me anything you'd like for ten minutes. It's uh, four forty-seven. You can ask me anything you'd like until four fifty-seven. Hey, questionable burrito. That is a fantastic name. Uh, Nacho Flores says, a screening of Furiosa came with raves. If Joker is good, Warner Brothers will have three blockbusters as major Oscar contenders next year. Uh, let's see. I, they won't push all three of them. They can't afford it. Stardust 490 says, what are your top three Jake Gyllenhaal movies? Ah, I love Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, I guess, okay, that's an interesting question. Let me see if I can do that. I actually like him so much, I bet I can. Um, Nightcrawler. Uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. I thought he was fantastic as Mysterio. And then, uh, what's that one? I really, I, he's done a lot of really good stuff. I guess Source Code. I kind of liked Source Code. Did I like it? I can't, I, part of me feels maybe I didn't like I think it was very, I think I did like it. I like Jake Gyllenhaal. Nobody wants to see Jake Gyllenhaal, but I like him quite a bit. Steve Quantanilla, I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Oh, David Kyle, that's a good name for the accountant. The accountant, pew, pew. Rodrigo, I haven't even watched part two of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills Reunion. I got screeners for three body problems, so I got to start watching those so I can review it. I've never seen Donnie Darko Haunted Autumn. It just never appealed to me. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kiss My Kimchi says, do you think X-Men should be like pre be an intro like pre-Avengers... Uh, Storm, so, oh, you mean like you should do all the X-Men individually before, so, uh, no, I think they got to do a group movie first. I think it has to, I don't, I think the X-Men are always group. I don't, I mean, I guess some of them can have solo movies, like, Wolf, even the Wolverine solo movies, except for Logan, for the most part, didn't work out. I think X-Men is a group project. Oh, yeah, Prisoners! How could I forget Prisoners? That's my third one. Prisoners, I loved Prisoners. It's hard to go wrong with Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Van Dorn, I did say that, I see that Io, Io Abiri is an, is an inside out too. I did a trailer reaction. Let's see. Uh, Fidegan, I'm not quite sure what you're saying there, but to you as well. Oh, Alistair Campbell, you're right. A Ambulance was a great movie. That's a Michael Bay film that came out. Uh, that's with Yahya Abdul-Mateen II. Uh, the first 15 minutes of it are ridiculous, but if you can get past the first 15 minutes of Ambulance, that's an incredible film. Could not recommend it more highly. If you need something to watch tonight, watch Ambulance with Jake Gyllenhaal. Where is it streaming? Let me tell you, because it's so good. Again, 
You're going to think it's dumb, but after 15 minutes, you'll be like, this movie's incredible. Mm -hmm. Hulu seems to have it. I don't think it's on Prime Video. Maybe Prime Video, but I think Hulu has it. I'm checking, I'm checking. This content is not available in my area. I hate when that happens. I hate that. Looks like you're going to have to pay for it. But it's worth it. Pay for it. It's very good. Rent it. I like that everybody can just bring up how good all this all this good um, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal movies. <laughs> I am very excited for Roadhouse. Let's see here. <clears throat> Bubble Boy is a hilarious thing to bring up, fiction fan. Let's see here. Ma Mandalorian Ace says, are you excited for White Lotus Season 3? My interest has peaked because Elisa of Blackpink is in the series. I'm of course I'm excited for White Lotus Season 3. I love White Lotus. I loved White both seasons. Incredible show. I love you too, Andrew. Or Andro. Sneaky says, I finally got around to watching Oppenheimer recently, and I'm really proud of the fact that I only fell asleep four times. Yay for you. I'm glad, I'm glad you saw it. I mean, it's going to win a lot of Oscars on Sunday, so you definitely want to have seen it. I'm so glad you guys have uh, love for Ambulance as well. Uh, Danny, I already talked about the fallout situation earlier. That's right, Scotia. Oh, uh, Scotian Skies, I actually am not a huge fan of The Day After Tomorrow. In my opinion, the best disaster movie from Roland Emmerich is 2012. Love 2012. Great disaster film. Although these days, disaster films are less fun because you're like, mm, that could actually happen. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Stephen Carrier, Velvet Buzzsaw. Yes, I, I mean, I thought Velvet Buzzsaw didn't really come together, but Jake Gyllenhaal's performance in it was excellent. Dancing Dog 60 says, Grace, did Gwyneth Paltrow retire from acting? I never see her as a lead anymore. Uh, I, think, I don't think she's like officially retired. I think she just hasn't found anything she wants to do. And she's so successful with Goop, she doesn't need to do anything else. But I mean, you could all, she can always come back. I mean, Cameron Diaz apparently retired, but now she's booking roles left and right all of a sudden again. CM says, even if X-Men characters don't have their own movies, do you think they could have supporting roles in non-X-Men projects like Mark Ruffalo as Hulk? For sure! Let's throw an X-Men in there. I don't know. I'm nervous. I want it to go well. You know, I'm such a big X-Men fan. I'm like, please don't ruin the X-Men. Please don't ruin the X-Men for me, man. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, that's right, Alistair Campbell. Okja is also an excellent Jake Gyllenhaal movie. Uh, you could throw a dart at Jake Gyllenhaal's resume and you would hit a good movie, or at least one that was fine to watch. <laughs> Haunted Autumn says, uh, Kyle Tran, yes, you did get a gifted membership. All right, so let's see here. Haunted Autumn says, I met Jake at a political rally in 2004. He was so down to earth and so amazed I wanted to actually talk real issues rather than just have a picture with him. I love that story. That's awesome. He also is in some great memes, like when he's at Jimmy Kimmel kissing goodbye as he goes out the door. That's a good one. Uh, or a gif, I guess, in that case. Uh, Will R says, besides Critics' Choice, are you a member of any other New York film critics groups? I am not. I am not a member of any other groups. I am a Rotten Tomatoes critic, and I am a Critics' Choice member. SMR Goose, I would agree with that. Let's see how Fantastic Four turns out. Although I do feel that X-Men will be soft launched in um, Deadpool versus Wolverine. Jiko says, any dinner plans tonight? You know, I defrosted a, uh, some uh, two chicken breasts, and I was considering making them because I did bother to defrost them, but I don't really want to do it. I have some ground beef, and I think I might rather make uh, burger patties. But yet, should I save the burger patties for before the Oscars on Sunday? But will I have time before movie math because the Oscars are now so early? These are the tough decisions I have to make. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, Steven Turner says, USA Today ranked Natalie Portman as the number one best actress win of the last 25 years. What? 
I, I don't know. We'll talk Oscars tomorrow, in fact. That's what tomorrow's stream is going to be about. So save your Oscar questions for tomorrow. Uh, Damon Terrell says, does being a film critic expand or limit your taste in movies? Is it hard to recall movies after seeing so many? And has it broadened your taste? That's a great question, Damon. It has certainly made me see more movies. Uh, well, I love movies. I grew up watching movies. I used to watch three movies a weekend growing up. Uh, and that's not even including the movies I used to watch sometimes during the week, especially during the summer. Uh, and it's hard for me to find a movie to watch because I've seen most of the movies that have been made. Uh, but uh, I will say that as new movies come out, I do sometimes go in and watch things in genres and things that I normally maybe would not watch if I was just doing it for my own personal taste. Uh, I think the thing that has been the most interesting to me is that it has helped me understand other moviegoers and other fandoms. That to me has been, I think, really interesting. It's kind of like just the way doing this in general has opened me up to other groups of people and, and ways of thought, schools of thought. I mean, that to me has been one of the most rewarding things about not only doing my channel, but the fact that it has an interactive component, that I am not just talking to you, but I'm talking with you. And so that, so I, I think that that has made a huge difference in my life. Uh, and so, yeah, but I mean, the only thing that's weird about being a film critic and covering this stuff is that it's hard not to feel like you're working when you're watching a movie. So that's why I have things that are in spaces that I don't cover, like reality TV or like really old movies. And then I'm like, ah, oh, great, you know, I can just enjoy this. I, it doesn't have to, it's not for work. Canadian Spider says, I'm a big Bethesda fan, and hearing that Fallout is a binge has hyped me, but I'm beginning to come around and agree that we would ingest this, well, we wouldn't uh, ingest the series better. Oh, oh, okay, let me try this again. I'm a big Bethesda fan, and hearing that Fallout as a binge has me hyped, but I am beginning to come around and agree that we as a group could ingest the series better on a weekly basis. Couldn't have said it better, Canadian Spider. I totally agree. I think a binge experience is more singular it's more you don't have you don't get to do it as a group let's see here yeah a lot of you are bringing up broke back mountain as well of course iconic danny says hi grace what's your favorite zombie movie of all time ah uh, i don't know i guess world war z i feel bad they never made the sequel i really liked world war z Starry, I've poured a lot of Agatha tea, and I have not heard anything about a trailer for it. Carson Johnson says, if Percy Jackson keeps doing well, do you think we could see a Kingdom Keeper series on Disney Plus? I don't know about that. I think that would be too expensive to do all the different characters. Let's see here. Junior Jangle says, Grace, why haven't these new Ghostbusters sequels released a catchy, funky, radio-friendly song like Ghostbusters 1 and 2? I don't know. I'm curious to see how Ghostbusters does. Uh, I don't feel a lot of heat for it. I mean, I'm excited for it, but there's, there's, just, there's something off about the campaign. Uh, you guys are very sweet. I really appreciate your comments. Da, 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 da. Lloyd in particular. That was a very nice thing to say, Lloyd. And Danny, I appreciate that as well. Uh, Jamie, I too am disappointed that the color purple did not really show up at the box office or during awards season. It was a really phenomenal film, but I think that that, um, it was a tough situation because while it was important things that were being spoken about, the PR campaign really just ran away from the film. Oh, thanks, Ramses. Says, Ramses, Grace just wanted to compliment your discipline and motivation with your diet. Uh, it, it's looking like, it's looking great. You've inspired me to take better care of my health and change my diet and habits. That makes me so happy, Ramses, because uh, I felt bad that it took me so long to do it myself. And so if I can help anybody be healthier and make those choices as well and to get you on the same train, um, it makes me feel a lot better. I told you I'm like a, I'm a Mediterranean diet evangelical. Hello, friend. Have you heard of the Mediterranean diet? It'll change your life. Uh, is it snowing, Jamie? I don't think it's snowing. I think I'm over time. I think I'm over the 10 minutes. All right, let's do shout outs. 
All right. Where are you? What are you doing? Let me say hi. Oh, Jose just got his Dune 2 IMAX tickets. Oh, it's a party. Uh, Marco is eating a feta cheese for life. That's good. That's part of it. Sensation is having some delicious brisket with Caesar salad while watching the stream. That's a nice dinner. Well, MM92 is eating Chinese food, and Brett is doodling in Kansas. I like that sunflower there. Timothy Austin says, definitely going to try the Mediterranean diet. Ah, excellent. Uh, let's see here. Lindsay, Lindsay Disney. Oh, I love your bell picture there. Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves was your favorite movie of 2023. That was a fun film. It's too bad it didn't do better. I Heart Movie says, in Ohio, sitting on my couch. Oh, I love it. Heather says, I'm considering food choices. That's awesome. Hey, in Houston there, Yessie. Marco DeVecchi says, hi, Grace. I'm up at Columbia in Harlem, and I noticed, um, oh, you also went to the Dolby to see Dune last week. That's awesome. It's a great theater. Elise says, going to watch Poor Things on Hulu. Brace yourself, Elise. Some people really like the movie, and you might too, but it's very adult. RJ14 says, uh, are work, at work, working on computers before getting off. You have 30 minutes to go of your day. That's great. Kyle Tran says, freaking out over my first stream as a member, watching in Virginia. Ah, it's great to have you here, Kyle. I love your, I love your energy. Uh, Justin Olivier, Olivieri says, getting ready for a late lunch. Oh, no. That's uh, Danny says, getting ready for a late lunch. Much love. A fan in Guatemala. Always great to have you here, Danny. Well, Justin Olivieri says, listening while I do my grocery shopping. I think you said that before, right? Do I always catch you in your grocery shopping, or was that somebody else? I grocery shopped this morning, actually. Uh, let's see here. CM says, at the airport, heading to D.C. Have a good time. I've never been to Washington, D.C. I've always wanted to go. Uh, Timothy Austin says, walking my dog in Georgetown, Guyana. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, Aston uh, Lowther says, did you see the new Amazing Fallout trailer? I did. I would have reacted to it, but I don't have enough um, announce. You know, then my damsel video wouldn't have gotten a notification on YouTube when it goes up. It's like around 7 o'clock tonight. It'll be actually a little later than that now that I see the time. But I, I was like, darn it. So that's, that's my situation. Let's see here. Ivan Sarmi, but I thought it looked pretty good. I thought it looked pretty good. I thought uh, Walton Goggins seemed to be playing the Joker, which I thought was a little bit surprising. Uh, Ivan Sarmiento says, here in Mexico, about to take a run and preparing to rewatch Dune 2 at the theaters. Ha! Huh. Fantastic. And Love to Travel says, getting ready to eat some lunch in California. Dune 2 is a great rewatch. I saw it twice as well. J. Scott Garibay is saying Dune 2 four times already. Oh, wow, that's so many times. Uh, Ross McCartan says, I'm reading comics in Belfast. I love talking to you guys all over the globe. I think that's great. And all over the country. Uh, Ryan says, uh, any tea? I don't mind what, just some tea. You're just thirsty for tea, huh? I gave you some tea yesterday. You guys, I have to be very careful with the tea. I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, let's see here. Rashad says, on the bus to work, excited for my staycation this weekend. Oh, that's going to be great, Rashad. I hope you have some good stuff saved up to do. Although you're in Vegas, I think you're going to have a, a, a great time, obviously. Uh, let's see here. Aided Buffalo is touching the ceiling at spin class. How tall are you? Or I think your bike needs to be readjusted. Uh, let's see here. Colton hasn't seen Dune 2 yet. Join the party, man. Come on. Hey, Matt in Michigan. Official Liam has seen Dune 2 five times and is going again tonight. Oh, I love it. Ben 10 says, I'm going to rewatch Logan. Hi from France. Uh, love you all. Uh, bonjour, Ben. And then Elise says, Hasbun Hotel is also on Amazon. Yeah, that really seemed to blow up, didn't it? I was surprised at how well that seems to have done. I can't wait to see if it shows up on the Nielsen charts. And then Sepa Tui says, thank you for keeping me sane while looking after my sick grandson. Oh, it's our pleasure. I hope he's feeling okay. That's so kind of you to help take care of him. I'm sure he really appreciates it. Uh, I don't care, Bear says, in London, wrestling with some stubborn velvet, trying to make a dress without throwing it on the floor. That sounds like a very interesting afternoon. You shall defeat that velvet. I'm sure of it. And then Isaac Lopez says, hello from McAllen, Texas, crocheting a Snoopy. That's so cool. I hope it turns out really well. Uh, all right. And then Danny Dumphy says, just say hello to all from my courtyard in Florida. Ah, oh, you guys are great. All right, I, I like how many people can relate to the velvet situation. That's awesome. 
Uh, Cat Chicks is making butter, buttermilk chicken from scratch, but with pan-fried potatoes. I can't help myself. I'm German. That does sound like very German dinner. All right, I better get going. I love talking to all of you, but I got to get this damsel review up. It will be a little after 7, I think, actually. Uh, but I will see you tomorrow for an Oscar stream. And the Oscar stream is going to be earlier in the day. So please keep that in mind. It's going to be like, I think it'll be like 1130 maybe. No later than 12 o'clock. I think it can't even be that late. I think it has to be like at 1130. Yeah. Okay. See you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.